is the way that it could be combined and it would not be detrimental to either the public or the county. And so I'd like to hear your feel on the legality of it. Yeah, the legality is, is, is fine. Um, the, the question is always, and, and it's, it is probably better to have the same body do both things because the concern is you, if you created a separate appeals board that, you know, and tried to get professionals to, to sit on it, and they might never be utilized, just like in Apache, and I don't think we've ever had an appeal. Um, whereas if you have the advisory board serving as the appeals board, at least they will have something to do in their advisory capacity. So it won't be like asking an engineer or an architect to be appointed to a board that never does anything. So, um, but anyway, the legality would be fine. Uh, would be fine. It's not the only way that it, it could be done, but it's a sensible uh, and legal way of doing it. So when, uh, if, this, if this body were formed, would we form it as two bodies or would we form it as one body? So uh, they would be meeting in dual capacity at all times or would they be meeting in one capacity at some time and another capacity at another time? They, they, separate capacities. Okay, yeah. so it would be... Um, you're creating two you're boards one, with the spilling one, with the same people. Same, same people, two boards, but if they were meeting as one, it would be noticed like we do. We, we meet as a, this kind of board and we meet as this kind of board. So that isn't... Exactly. Okay. I wanted to make sure that there was an understanding of that before we had any other discussion. Okay. Board members, do you have any comments, questions? Question. Um, five, six years ago, we had an advisory group working on the building code. Um, was that, I guess, it was never formally approved, or how was that, that was just something in a... I think it was just a group of contractors that we got together, and it was a sounding board that there was no uh, formal designation of okay. that group as any kind of an advisory board. Okay. Questions, comments, supervisor call? that Pinnell had never used it or had used it once. Once, once in 15 years. Pinnell went through an incredible growth spurt uh, during that time. Okay, I, it's, it, would that suggest that the, the function itself wasn't particularly useful? Or that it seems hard to believe that what Pinnell went through all, when it was growing so much that that there wouldn't be some issues. I think it was, to clarify that, I think it was their appeal, the appeals board. No, they said their board. Okay. I thought that too. Interesting. Yeah. I think most people like to solve things at another level besides going to us or some board. You know, they want to work it out before it gets there, but I, I think the, the law allows us to have the board in case someone wants to, to take it that far, and I think that's what, what we're looking at today. Do we want to create a joint building code advisory board appeals board? Any other comments or direction to Mr. Ortega? Uh, do you have comments, Mr. Ortega? No, I do not. Mr. Vlahovic, since you have uh, worked with planning and building a lot, do you do you think that we need to go in this direction? Is it something that we should do? I, I do, and I, you know, I'm trying to remember in my years here, it seems like there was a building code issue that was brought to the Board of Supervisors years and years and years ago that was related to the construction of the New Buena High School. And I'm not sure if that went through any kind of an advisory board. I remember that there was one constituted, but again, we had issues with keeping people on that board, uh, which is, is at Brit's point, is, you have one board and, and one group of folks, it's easier to maintain that rather than having two separate boards. But uh, us, like the other counties, we, we really haven't seen any any appeals in the years that, that we had the building code in, in existence, which is from about 1985. Okay, I, I think that one thing that I think is important is that um, if there's an appeal of, of an action, that it does come to the Board of Supervisors not directly to us but you know it needs to go through the process and hopefully if it isn't worked out then we would be at the as we are with the 
you know, tax issues and many other things that need to come so that we're aware of this controversy and have an opportunity to weigh in on it uh, on behalf of the public. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that the, the board understood what was being proposed is is you have the building official making you know decision on whatever building matter comes before him and if the applicant doesn't like that decision what's being proposed here is there is an appeal mechanism to this appeal board and if the applicant or the department doesn't like the outcome then uh, it would go to the board of supervisors and of course then if they didn't like that there's always superior court as a but anyway, there's going to be a lot of procedure involved here. Okay. And, and I think that as, as I have stated in the past, I'm, I'm pretty big on wanting lists and, and procedures written down. Yeah. So I think that it's Oh, yeah, uh, we, will process, need, we will need to write all of that. The process needs to be, you know, in a, in a linear form so the public has an understanding of when they're asking this question, this is, this is what's involved. And if, if we go for this. If you decide to move forward with this, Any other questions, comments? You're making the recommendation at this time, Beverly, to do this? This is a staff suggestion? <coughs> yes. Okay, we've been, you know, there has not any been any deals. Um, we had our advisory board, we had an advisory group up in place for a while. Um, is, do you see something that's driving this need for this appeal board at this time? Um. I think that this was something that was handed to me to process issue accordingly. And I think, I think the Planning and Building Commission was sort of blindsided and didn't know, wanted to know more about it. And they, yeah. they are the ones that initiated the fact that we needed to look into this. So I think it wasn't. It wasn't the planning department that initiated it, it was the planning and zoning commission that said, would you look at this and see if we need to do okay. this? So I, I'm just trying to. If Madam Chair, members of the board, I believe that the, the issue is we are out of compliance in the current structure and we need, to be, we need to get into compliance. Whether or not anyone comes before the right. board, we need to put the board in place. The statutes are, are clear in this in that we need to have some mechanism. We need to formalize that, memorialize that, and that's why it's before the board. How long has this been a requirement? How long have we been out of compliance? Uh, you'd have to go back to the statute yeah, and find out statute when that was. Uh, yeah, there was a statute that was passed. And, uh, uh, and, and there's the compliance <coughs> part, but I think uh, Mr. Holden, in conversations I've had with him, said that he would actually like to have the advisory board in place, whereas I don't think previous building officials have been maybe that uh, enthusiastic about it. Um, and, but as far as the appeals board goes, that's the one that makes me the, the most nervous because if somebody actually did appeal something from a decision made by Mr. Holden and we have no mechanism in place, I, I think they win their appeal because we haven't provided any mechanism for it. So I think although we haven't had the appeal, if we ever did have one, I think we'd be cutting their pants down. Okay, so it looks as though I guess we would, uh, I, I would like to authorize the uh, planning and zoning department to put together the documentation and I would like to alert the board members you saw the the makeup of what the board should be if you have people that you would like to suggest to be on that board that you send those to planning and zoning so that we can sort of correlate you know and put together a board that might represent either countywide or people that you think would be willing to serve so if each one of us does that great conversation if you put it in writing, please, that would be better. <laughs> yeah, we're looking for direction from the board on this matter. We'll bring it back to you for formal consideration. Right. Uh, That's why I say if, so if we would send that information so that they can put together the uh, information to bring to a board meeting. So I understand that you're in, when you get just a little paragraph in terms of what the duties might be. Okay. Uh, so that if we right. talk to somebody, it, it appears as if. Uh, whoever we talk to, we're going to be able to say that if you serve on this board, it's unlikely we will ever see you again, but nevertheless, we're likely to serve. You'd be available. You'd be available. <laughs> okay. Anything else? 
I think what Britt said uh, struck a chord with me in terms of the appeals process. Uh, that clarified a lot of things in my mind as well. That we need to have that in place. What about the process? Yeah. So the public knows that it's available. Okay. okay. Then if there's nothing further, I think we've given direction to them to follow up and bring it back to us so that we can act in a, in a, a regular session from the board. Thank you. Thank you. Work session adjourned.